Can you put him on the... Hello, good day, Megumi. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, hello. Good morning from Tokyo. My name is Megumi from Jerka. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Good afternoon or evening, I guess. Um, okay, everything seems to be working fine. We can hear and see you properly. Uh, if you can hear and see us properly, then the test is done. Okay, thank you. It's properly. I can hear you. Thank you very much. Perfect. Good luck.
out like half an hour between uh, our events. So the next event will not start until 20.30. So even if it runs a little late, we can't.
the red, just in case. was muted. Mic check.
。好。So thank you for coming today. Hello, everyone. So I'm Atsushi Takashi from JICA.、Uh, I'm JICA expert and the project coordinator of the GCF、uh, JICA and the Maldives GCF project. So、uh, now today we are able to open the event、uh, thanks to the NDC partnership、uh, staff.、Uh, I'd like to say thank you for every、uh, staff from the NDC partnership. Thank you very much. And、uh, now, shall we start the event? And、uh, we will close.、Uh, we have a time until、uh, 11.、Uh, so, about 50 minutes. So, first of all, we would like to、uh, introduce、uh, Mr. Garrett、uh, the Hillbill, Deputy Director of、uh, Division of Pro,、uh, Portfolio Management, Green Climate Fund. He focused on the implementation of GCF portfolio and uh, uh, project and programs, as well as GCF、uh, led, uh, readiness and uh, pre uh, pre uh, preparatory support program.、Uh, Mr. Garrett、uh, Zahirbil, thank you for coming today. So, could you please come and、uh, please give us、uh, opening remarks? Thank you. <clears throat> Hello,、um, excellencies, distinguished, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I bring you the warm greetings of the Green Climate Fund from、uh, from Incheon, South Korea. The Green Climate Fund is the world's largest climate finance fund, dedicating to supporting developing countries to mitigate and adapt to climate change. I'd like to thank the organisers of the events, the Maldives and、uh, JICA, and、uh, appreciate this opportunity to engage on you with, with regard to implementing with our implementing partners、uh, for this project as well.、Uh, GCF has a valuable role in supporting、uh, countries in achieving their na、uh, national designated contributions.、Um, GCF has, a, has approved three projects in the Maldives, with a total financing of 52.4 million. And has approved readiness funding of 2.8 million. Maldives, as you may know, ranks 31st most vulnerable country and 81st most ready country in the Notre Dame Social Adaptation in Initiative Matrix, demonstrating progress in climate change adaptation. But really, urgent needs for adaptation、um, remain. Sea level rise and storm surge caused by climate change. Is intensifying、uh, in the coastal erosion, an intrusion of salt water in groundwater、uh, in the Maldives. We see increase in occurrences of natural hazards、um, such as swell waves,、uh, storm surges, and flooding, exacerbating the vulnerability、um, problems of the country and causing the associated socio-economic damage. We see beach erosion and land loss too. So sea level rise during the last 50 years is most likely the principal source of co co observed coastal erosion in the intervention areas of Mandu and Fun Funadu. Apologies for my pronunciation.、Um, with estimated drainage ranging from 30 to percent、uh, to 50 percent in Mandu and 60 to 100 percent in Funadu. Other potential implications include a decline in sand supply from coral reefs as a result of Coral ecosystem deterioration and other human activities. To address these challenges, the project we'll hear about today, building climate resilient, safer, safer islands in the Maldives, proposes to enhance management of coastal lines as well as increase the protective function of the natural sandy beaches and coral reefs to address climate vulnerabilities caused by sea level and rising storm surges in the Maldives. The project will establish integrated coastal zone management, basic policy and plans, implementation of coastal conservation and protection measures against、uh, against coastal disasters, including via beach nourishment in five populated islands. It will develop a disaster warning and information broadcasting system, 
and develop a monitoring system for wave, sea level and land use of beach protection. GCF financing will support implementation and coastal conservation and protection measures um, in five inhabited islands and support capacity building for stakeholders. The total project budget is 66 million US dollars, of which 25.1 million is from, US, uh, from GCF in the form of grants. And the government of Maldives um, is financing 5.5 million in the form of grants and in kind. And the accredited entity JICA is financing 35.4 million in the form of grants. The project is expected to directly benefit 9,071 beneficiaries and 372,000 beneficiaries indirectly, in addition to projecting, protecting 4.2 kilometers of national shorelines and nourishing 9.9 .9 hectares of beach. We thank JICA uh, for your role as accredited entity for this project and that, uh, uh, that GCF will continue to work with JICA and the NDA uh, in realizing the impacts under this project. GCF offers readiness and preparatory support for developing concept notes into funding proposals and we're able to discuss any implementation matters and make the course adjustments where needed to successfully implement either this project or other projects that GCF funds. We're confident that working with JICA, uh, we can scale up the successes of this unique project in other vulnerable islands and coastal states. So I look forward now to hearing from the other speakers who give us more insights into the successes and challenges of this incredible project. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bill. And uh, next, so I'd like to, uh, the Mr. Ahmed uh, Wahid, the Director, Climate Change Department of Ministry of Climate Change, Environment and Energy from uh, Maldives, and uh, would like to give us an overview uh, of the current situation and the sector of the climate change uh, in Maldives. So please, could you please come here and uh, give us a speech? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Salaam Alaikum and a very good morning to you all. At the outs outset, allow me to thank all of you on behalf of the organizers for joining us today to this important event on sharing experiences and updating you on one of the coastal adaptation and resilience building projects being implemented in the Maldives. As a small and low-lying developing island nation, the Maldives certainly ob is observing climate change impacts. And these impacts are worst and diverse, causing environmental, social, and economic hardship to our people and communities. Now, the impacts are becoming more frequent and severe. Extreme events are on the rise. Coastal and beach erosion, <coughs> saltwater intrusion into freshwater aquifers, increased frequency and intensity of storm surge, as well as intensified and lengthy dry periods, and unprecedented changes in rainfall patterns often result in water stress in many islands. Flooding and associated damage to critical and public infrastructure and properties are becoming a major challenge facing us now. The list goes on and on. The low elevation of the islands, smallness, and geographical and socio-economic challenges make Maldives highly vulnerable to severe weather events. While retreating inland or to higher grounds is higher ground is impossible. Accelerated sea level rise due to climate change will have devastating effects on the islands and could threaten their very existence. Today, Beach and coastal erosion remains one of the greatest challenges facing almost all islands. More than 80% of the islands record severe to moderate degree of erosion annually. Ladies and gentlemen, the government is doing its best to address the climate challenge. 
from building resilient and climate proof infrastructure to scaling up mitigation actions to increase share of renewables in our energy mix. Although our share of emission stands at 0.003% compared to global GHG emissions. The resources in our hand are not enough compared to the challenges we are facing. Dear colleagues, we all are gathered here to share experiences from one of the very important coastal resilience building projects already been implemented in the Maldives. Building climate resilient safe islands in the Maldives is more than six USD 60 million project. Under implementation, the project is under, under implementation, implementation together with support from the government of Maldives, JICA and the GCF. The project will address some of the climate-induced sea level rise challenges faced in the country. It aims to enhance coastal management, including maintaining protective functions of natural sandy beaches and coral reefs. It will do this through integrated coastal zone management practices, early warning and early action, and also knowledge by knowledge sharing. This project will also mark one of the first integrated adaptive beach protection project uh, solutions in the Maldives. While implementing this project, we are making sure that targeted island communities and their stakeholders are properly consulted. Their needs are being considered as much as possible. Their knowledge is taken care of and community ownership and sustainable management is well addressed. Let me also highlight briefly the works we are doing with JICA and GCF. We have been working with JICA for a long time, not only on sustainable coastal solutions, but also on many development-related programs and projects. I would like to mention the coastal project we are discussing today also includes an important aspect of early warning and systematic observation components, and that will further enhance the prediction and early warning capacities of national institutions. <coughs> Sorry. Through GCF, we have also initiated some resilience building and adaptation projects, such as the climate-induced water security project, under which we were able to address climate-induced water security issues in some of the vulnerable island communities in the Maldives. In addition, we have initiated several readiness programs, such as building the capacity of our NDA, the, N the ongoing CSRI project with GIZ, development of Maldives NEP together with UNEP. We also have some projects under the pipeline waiting to be approved. Distingu distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as we embark on finding solutions to one of the most challenging issues faced in the small island states like the Maldives, I highly encourage all of us to learn from each other and share the best practices, best practices from our work and interventions, especially that are related to integrated coastal zone management. Thank you. Thank you very much. So next, uh, I'd like to ask Ms. Uh, Ms. Tsukizoe uh, Megumi from JICA uh, to uh, talk a bit from the accredited entity. So Megumi-san, uh, would you please uh, mind giving us a few words? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Megumi Tsukizoe from JICA headquarters, Disaster Risk Reduction Group. Uh, Global Environment Department. Uh, good morning, everyone, and good afternoon from Tokyo. I'm very happy to have an opportunity to present about the financial structure and the implementation structure of Maldive JICA GCF project. So, could you show the uh, presentation data? Uh, thank you very much. So first, uh, let me introduce about JICA. JICA is a bilateral cooperation agency 
uh, led it by the Japanese government, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, we, uh, our mission is the realizing of human security and uh, aligned with the SDGs. And some SDGs goals contain the elements of disaster risk reduction and climate actions. Next, please. And JICA's, uh, JICA, we have a variety of scheme and cooperation menus mm -hmm. such as loan and grant aid uh, to establish infrastructure and technical cooperation project for technical transfer. And also we have several projects uh, such as uh, a joint research project, the volunteer and the private partnership uh, engagement program. And also disaster, uh, Japan Disaster Relief Team for humanitarian support. Next, please. Even though we have various uh, types of cooperation menu, uh, the cooperation with national and overseas organization is very essential. And the uh, GCF is uh, one of the most important partner for us uh, to achieve uh, early warnings for all initiative and also to tackle with uh, and make impact for climate change adaptation project for us. And JICA, we uh, conclude the accreditation master plan uh, agreement with GCF in 2018. Next, please. And this is the uh, uh, financial structure of uh, Maldives JICA GCF project. The total project cost is 66 million US dollar, uh, composed of three funds from GCF, Maldives, and also JICA. GCF fund is uh, 25.1 million US dollar and the Maldives co-finance is 5.48 million US dollar and JICA co-financing project is uh, in total 35.4 million US dollar uh, with uh, two JICA technical cooperation project, one and one grant aid project. With these three kind of uh, fund, uh, we uh, com contain the four technical cooperation uh, cooperation component. Next, please. And this is a timeline of uh, our uh, project. JICA's technical cooperation project and the grant aid project designated as JICA's co-financing project has already started. And uh, the component two uh, has uh, started uh, November 29. And uh, this component two is uh, funded by uh, the government of Maldives and the GCF fund. Next, please. And this is project implementation structure of our project. JICA uh, is a supervisor project as an accredited entity and also uh, implement JICA co-financing project. And the component two uh, marked with a red line uh, is implemented by a project management unit and the uh, uh, Ministry of Climate Change and the Environment and the Energy. And the overall, uh, super uh, overall management and the implementation of the project is led by the government of Maldives, uh, Ministry of Climate Change and the uh, Environment and the Energy. Next, please. And this is a, a structure of a fund for GCF funded activity. Uh, we, JICA, as an accredited entity, receive GCF fund from GCF and then disperse the fund to executing entity, the government of Maldives, uh, Ministry of Climate Change and the Environment and the Energy. And the Ministry of Climate Change, Environment and the Energy uh, operate that these fund for, uh, con for procurement of consultant and the contractor and the project management unit cost and, uh, and coordinate the daily operation. And uh, we, JICA, uh, send two Japanese experts to organize and facilitate the smooth implementation of the project. And uh, Mr. Takashi is uh, one of the JICA experts to support the operation of the GCF project. Thank you. That's all for my presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Megumi-san. Uh, next, uh, the 
Uh, from me, uh, I'd like to talk about a little bit uh, the components of the project. Uh, uh, quickly and briefly. And after that, I will ask uh, Mr. Light, the, he's the project manager, to give us more information. And uh, first of all, the, this is the component one. The component one is the aim is to uh, establish uh, the integrated uh, coastal zone management. Uh, it includes the planning of the uh, G ICZM policy and the plans, and also capacity building for the engineers. Oh, sorry. That's kind of okay. The capacity building for the engineers in Maldives. Uh, our project provides uh, online uh, on the job training through the co working of Maldivian uh, engineers and the JICA engineers and also the training in Japan and uh, Indonesia, and uh, seminars to the stakeholders in model sites. And now I'd like to talk about a little bit the ICZM uh, structure. Our project aims to formulate the national level policy and the local or regional level or plans. We apply the national level policy to the regional level uh, plans and the uh, model site, and then we uh, implement it and uh, accumulate these experiences uh, as a model cases of ICZM and uh, give feedback to the national uh, level policy uh, again uh, to, improve, uh, to improve it. The key point is that the, we see the whole of the island uh, with uh, a bird's eye view to arrange the plans. Uh, and we utilize the national protection function that each island originally have. That is uh, uh, sustainable and uh, uh, leads the long-term cost savings. The regional uh, plan is uh, like that. It includes the four types of plans, the conservation, uh, uh, coastal con conservation plan, reef conservation plan, and the sediment management plan, and the land use plan. The, these plans covers <coughs> uh, cover necessary plants from land to uh, the leaf and offshore. Our long-term goal is that uh, these ICZM plants will be developed uh, by each local government uh, and that coastal conservation and the protection measurement will be implemented uh, na nationwide uh, taking into account climate change uh, impacts as well. And these will improve the resilience of the country as a whole. And then next, uh, component two, uh, this is aimed to uh, the mainly focus on the hard measurement uh, part based on the above ICZM plants. To, uh, we have five model sites and, uh, sorry, uh, two model sites uh, founded by the GCF for seas, that it's including the mainly uh, the na uh, uh, beach nourishment. And the uh, other three island is the founded by the Maldives co-financing. Uh, it's including uh, also the beach uh, nourishment and the uh, uh, limitment uh, to protect the heritage area. Uh, and uh, next. The component uh, two, activity 2.3, is uh, uh, community-based uh, beach uh, management and adaptive management. Uh, we discuss through the stakeholder meeting with the community and make a consensus for beach management that they can implement by themselves, co uh, connecting to, to their uh, daily life. And the next, the, this is component three, uh, the component three is uh, pro the, the protect the lives of residents through early warning information for coastal disasters. The, it will establish an um, uh, early warning information uh, broadcasting system, EWBS. <coughs> and the component includes the installment of the tele... Uh, 
uh, terrestrial digital broadcasting uh, system such as digital transmission station and uh, network operation center. The broadcasting system uh, uh, po population coverage is more than 80 percent. It also includes the capacity development of a relevant organization on the system operation and the public education and the, uh, awareness rating activities uh, regarding uh, the, uh, the disaster risk reduction uh, reduction through such as pilot evacuation drills uh, using the early warning broadcasting system. The next, the component four, the, this is the, uh, in, the component four installed the uh, wave monitoring uh, in three locations, the north and the middle and the south side of the Maldives and uh, established the wave monitoring system to cover all of the motives. The system is the first wave monitoring system in motive that the meteorological authority conduct the ocean observation and the uh, maintenance of the uh, devices by themselves. The component uh, includes the capacity building for the appropriate uh, maintenance of the monitoring system as well. And the uh, component o four also including the, the, the cost to leave uh, and the land use monitoring system utilizing uh, satellite uh, images and uh, UAV technologies. Uh, that can uh, digitize the ch uh, changes of the such as the coastal line and the time series. And this is last. I would like to conclude my presentation by talking about the relationship among the component. The component one and two aim to improve land resilience through ICZM. It covers extremely uh, extreme uh, extensive event such as sea level rise or beach uh, erosion and it present, uh, prevent, prevent and reduce damages with national protection uh, function and uh, partial hard measures. The component three it provides the early warning system through broadcasting. It covers uh, extreme events such as tsunami and the high tide and it, uh, it mitigates damages uh, with, uh, through soft measures of the evacuation. The component four uh, is the long-term monitoring system for basic information such as uh, wave coast, uh, reef, and the land. The monitoring system will accumulate data and these fundamental data allow an analysis of long-term change and the forecast. That's, for, uh, that's all from me. Thank you uh, very much. Next, uh, Mr. Light, uh, could you please? Uh, thank you, Takaji san. Bismillah uh, Rahim. Ohayo gozaimasu, and wishing you a very Good morning, distinguished guests, invitees. My name is Ahmad Raid, and I am the project manager for this project, and also I am a senior coastal analyst working at the Ministry of Climate Change, Environment, and Energy. And I would like to share some of the progress of the project so far. So one of the first works that we did uh, was to have an inventory study of all the islands of the Maldives. So we carried out a survey for all 189 inhabited islands of the Maldives. And we collected a total of 129 responses. And this questionnaire was essentially understanding the current conditions as well as the public perception of these coastlines and what their ideas are for conservation methodologies. And we also conducted a comprehensive assessment for the current laws and regulations pertaining to coastal zone management in the Maldives. And Additionally, a lot of surveys were, were carried out in all five project islands, which is Lam Fonadu, Lam Mamendu, Lam Ugang, Lam Istu, as well as Addu City Midu. And a total of 290 points were surveyed on these target islands, and 66 
samples were taken to understand the grain composition and sizes for these islands as well. And all of these fall into the uh, component one of developing an integrated coastal zone management policy in the Maldives. And another uh, initial step that we took was to have a capacity needs assessment for the focal point members. And all the relevant organizations were consulted thoroughly and their gaps and data needs as well as their capacity needs were assessed. And uh, a, a culmination of that is to have uh, our ICZM policy and planning seminars where we bring together all the focal point members and we share their work and their limitations. And we have uh, an open discussion with all the relevant stakeholders to see what the gaps are and what the ways forward are. And moving on to component two on the basic design of coastal conservation protection measures. Um, we've had consultations with all the island and city councils regarding the community-based beach management systems. So we have consulted with the locals as well as the island and local councils to see what the current practices are, what their needs are as well, and what their ideas are, and their perception and their awareness on coastal protection measures and maintenance measures by, uh, at a community level. And I would also like to share that the basic design for the coastal protection measures have been successfully completed for the five islands. I would just like to uh, show them here. This uh, Lam Mamendu, Lam Fonadu, Lam Istu, Lam Mugang, and Addu City Midu. And uh, moving on to component three of developing a coastal zone monitoring system. Uh, like Takahashi San mentioned, three candidate sites were selected for installation of monitoring systems one in the north region, one in the central region, and one in the southern region of the Maldives. And uh, we have met with the relevant stakeholder agencies and gotten ideas on uh, their suggestions as well. And we've uh, pretty much uh, finalized two sites, and we're still working on finalizing where to install the wave monitoring system in the central region because it's very, uh, the sea traffic is pretty high. So we need to uh, look uh, into other candidate sites as well. And uh, additionally, the first version of the shoreline monitoring system, uh, we call it the SCR tool, Automated Shoreline Extraction and Analysis Tool, uh, has been prepared and the manual document has been shared and now we have started using the tool. And this tool comprises of four major areas, the first one being the shoreline extraction, which um, extracts the data from 2015 to 2023 for available images for islands of the Maldives on the shoreline changes throughout the years. And we can understand the retreats and growth areas of the islands to make a comprehensive data-driven decisions in the policy level as well. And this is a bit of a picture of one sample that we uh, created by our experts, which focused on Gang and Fonadu. And we've also had capacity building at, at our ministry as well as our st relevant stakeholder agencies as well for this, uh, for use of this tool. And additionally, we, there's uh, so much focus on capacity building. I would also like to highlight the, some of the uh, activities carried out by the team as well. The, the first one was the JICA Knowledge Co-Creation Program held in Okinawa, Japan in 2022. Um, we've had experts joining in from Indonesia, Marshall Islands, Fiji, and also the Philippines, where all the experts came in and shared their ideas, their uh, issues. And we've had a pleasure and privilege working with Dr. Uda, who is one of the cornerstones, one of the pillars of coastal protection measures in Japan, as well as the Maldives as well. So it was an honor working alongside him, getting his insight, getting his knowledge as well. So it really helped boost our knowledge as well as our broadening our horizons on what the protection measures are in Japan and what can be recreated in all of our countries as well. And additionally, um, we've uh, held trainings in Japan for our meteorological service officials working in, in the Met Office as well. So this was in August this year, and we've had training on how to install, how to monitor, and as well as how to carry out maintenance activities for the equipments that are being installed as well. So we've had on-site, on-hand experience 
delivered to us as well. So a lot of progress, uh, I can say that it's in enhancing our capacity at, and our drive to work on the, these measures. And a training, uh, like Takahashi san mentioned, in Bali for focal point members. So we've not only focused on the stakeholder agencies and the government side, but we've also um, invited the island level councils to participate in these trainings as well. So a lot of knowledge coming from the go government and top side to the island councils. Usually there's a discrepancy between um, the awareness and the way things work. So it was a really, really insightful journey for them as well. So it really helped them better understand our project as well as what the ideas are behind our measures and what the end product is as well. And then I'd like to highlight that there's one uh, training that's currently ongoing as well. So as we speak, we also have the second round of our stakeholders joining for the second training held in Okinawa, Japan, as well as Tokyo this time. So they are currently in Tokyo and they are visiting all the coastal areas and understand the coastal protection measures. And also Dr. Uda is participating alongside them as well. Um, that's pretty much from the uh, from my side. Thank you so much for listening. Um, and with that, I would like to open for questions and answers session. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Sorry, that would help. Uh, yeah, I'm Gareth, um, director, uh, de sorry, deputy director of Division of Portfolio Management. Um, my team is responsible for working with accredited entities and other parties to implement uh, projects. Um, could I have comments, if possible, maybe email or in person, just on some of the difficulties or the challenges? I'm particularly working with with GCF on the financing, on the monitoring, the implementation. I guess any issues. And also just to highlight that you know our team is very open to conversations about ways we can change projects when, when necessary to smooth uh, the implementation to overcome challenges. We know from the design phase through to the implementation, things change. That's the only thing that's, that's certain. Um, sometimes we need to change those projects to help them achieve their, uh, their goals. So firstly, have there been any challenges? Secondly, just putting out there that people like me and Hide in the, in the team are there to help. And th I guess thirdly, we, you know, we're open to email comments as well, if needs be, um, out, of this, uh, out of this session. Thank you. Thank you so much for the question. Um, I, I think one of the one concern that, um, one uh, obstacle I'd say that we had was um, the lengthiness of the process for us. Um, initially, we were um, set to effectuate for um, in the April of this year, and the process took um, a while. So we've only gotten the FAA effectuation in the 29th November. So it took a while. So um, that is one obstacle that we faced. And then another would be, if I can highlight, is um, the political scheme and the political types of things and taking uh, when the process takes a lot of time and we have to directly correlate an answer to the locals and the communities as well. So usually when uh, the process takes a lot longer, it's met with a lot of skepticism and it's, I guess it's built off of a lot of previous experiences as well, but not necessarily our project or our process as well. So that is another obstacle that we are facing as well. So it's rapidly changing and the people's my, uh, perception of this is one obstacle that we face throughout this project so far. And then another thing, if I may highlight, is um, the outreach. Because our country is so widespread and comprised of many islands, it was really hard for us to um, engage with all of the islands independently as well. So our outreach was also a bit 
of a struggle. So when I mentioned that we've received around 68%, it took about a year and two months for us to receive that amount. Then that was also a lot of constant communication, trying to reach out, trying to remind them. and it's just like, So a lot of obstacles like that are there. But in terms of what we're working on now, I think if I can highlight, that would be the lengthiness of the process. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Do we have um, any more questions from the floor? <clears throat> I think um, if we don't have any questions, we can um, move on to close this session. I thank you so much for the participants for giving the valuable time. It was a really interactive session, I hope, and I hope you got an idea of where the project is and what the pro uh, progress is as well. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Just a few words, uh, it won't take <laughs> much time. So uh, once again, I would like to express our sincere appreciation and gratitude to you all for joining us today. I think it was a man, very good event that we learned a lot from uh, the experiences that uh, so far we have, uh, you know, we were able to, you know, get from the, uh, you know, implementation of the project. And. Uh, let me also thank the, all the speakers, especially the guest speakers, for sharing their experiences and contributing to this event. A special thanks goes to all the attendees and audiences. I know it's very busy time for most of the colleagues here. We are hopeful that together with JICA and also with support from GCF, we will very soon be in a position to initiate the infrastructure components of the project, which the island communities are eagerly waiting, as my colleague Wright mentioned. In conclusion, on behalf of the organizers, I want to thank all those who supported us by helping to make this happen, especially the support received from the NDC partnership on our request. Thank you all. The meeting is closed.